Thanks for staying with us. We're not estimated one third of the global population on lockdown. Services that deliver groceries, medicine, food, uh, prepared food, and other essentials have been on a higher demand. Now, on demand delivery companies have seen a boom in business, but to but do they the companies fund um, have funds and technology to scale up that business? That's the question. So we are being joined by Ejiro Jakwa. She's a visionaire behind locally produced breakfast cereals, knickknacks, granola, and alumni of the Center for Global Enterprise, African Women Entrepreneurship Cooperative, and the Cherry Blair Exxon Mobil Foundation Program, Road to Women's Business Growth Program. She has joined us via Skype. And we also have the founder, MD CEO of the MAP NG, Anya Sotma. And um, to also join us on this conversation. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038463. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Anya Nso. Anya Nso. Anya Nso. And Ejiro, yes. thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. All right, so we're going to start with you, Ejiro. You are in. Um, Food in the food business. So, and you would, for your kind of business, um, you are an essential service. How has the lockdown, first of all, affected, before we even move to logistics, how has it affected your business in terms of reaching your clients? Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to say fantastic platform. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this lockdown. Okay, so. The first week, initially, um, it did affect us because we had to close shop. Yes, we are essential services, but I think like the first um, seven to ten days, everybody was in panic mode. We really didn't know what was going on. So we were very comfortable with hibernating in our houses. But um, what we had done, because we're also watching the trend of what's going on, um, we had actually both produced... So we had enough stock that would carry us for about a month in case they decided to lock us down for a month. And then after the first week of the lockdown, you know, we once we started getting um, customized orders, larger customized orders, and speaking to my staff to arrange a very safe way for them to get to work and, you know, do the whole disinfection and all, we were able to run operations. But, um, I actually was able to get the staff to work. So the lockdown wasn't us. It was fine. Hardly any traffic on the road. to move around. The only challenge we had once was sourcing the raw material. But what I have also done before the Lagos State government had enforced this lockdown, as well as the federal government, was our key raw materials. We made sure we bought enough of it in stock so that we could go, you know so with adequate adequate planning we were able to uh, to sort things out all right and of course during the that we were also able to secure a deal with one of the you know one of the top pharmacies in nigeria as well so it was lockdown was fair for us oh that's good oh. so i also you are in the logistics business and Definitely. you know it seems like you people are balling right now <laughs> everyone everyone yes. wants a delivery person because nobody exactly. wants to go to I the want store to take yeah him on <laughs> so how has the um, the lockdown affected logistics the business well i'll say two ways positively and negatively, and negatively. Yeah. Okay. but actually the negative aspects actually prompted the positive one uh, let me start from, normally there are vendors that wouldn't use uh, logistics. Uh, there are restaurants that still prefer their customers to walk in and eat their food in their restaurants before the lockdown. Now, after the lockdown, they are already forced to start using logistics. So that increased our market share. And as well, um, their suppliers, those ones who supply them raw food, like the woman who sells yam in the market, the rice seller, the bean seller, ordinarily they wouldn't need logistics. Mm. But now since they've been locked down, now it's expanded our movement from A to B, then B to C. That means from the raw food seller to the vendor, the vendor cooks the food, then we still move it from the, the vendor to the, to the end user. Then when you get to the end user, the end user also needs logistics. <laughs> Please, I want to deliver something. Let me have your number, I'll be calling you. Okay. So a lot of people need, so it came with negative and positive. It closed some doors. Because remember the oh, lockdown, 
uh, non essentials. Of course, you can deliver laptops from yeah. the guidelines. Yeah. You can deliver laptops, it fashion items. It has so to be food, essential exactly. Food, yeah. food and drugs. drugs yeah. Normally, pharmacies, new pharmacies popped up on our platforms, new restaurants popped up. So, new vendors popped up, new merchants, but non essentials was turned off for us, but new things turned on. So, so that covered. Uh, that covered, exactly. So, the volume. I thought, well, I need bikes. I need dedicated bikes. I need five. I need 10. I need 12. I need four. I need three. So, we are busy. Unlike before, we are now busy around the clock. I think 73 hours a day. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, um, Recently, about some few days or I think last week, yeah. you've before have been in the news. Yeah. You've been directly at loggerheads with the Lagos State Government. Yes. And it was particularly re regarding your registration. Mm. I have done an extensive um, re um, research. Beautiful. And I want to think that yeah. you people didn't do your research very well because all those laws that were awakened mm -hmm. has been in existence. So my question is, when you were starting out, mm -hmm. what were the steps you took Beautiful. to be in business? Great. Well, um, these laws are not new to me okay. uh, because I've been the general manager of uh, an indigenous courier company here in Nigeria for three years and uh, they have necessary licenses. So before I broke out, I already knew the necessary things to get on board, necessary documentations, but there's a problem. It never stops. How it's non-stop because... No, because Lagos, the yeah, steps are way it, it, too the, much. And every day it increases. In and fact, it's duplic I think a lot of them are just duplicated. Why don't you have the one-stop shop for them? You, you can't. Hmm. Reason being Why? interests. It's a good business. It's, it's hotter than buying and selling. Uh, people are going to buy, people are going to sell. You don't well, have a business. So you just to convey it and that's it. So you're just, at the, just like a vulture hmm. waiting for the meat to hmm. die. You just yeah. come hmm. and do your job. And that's it. But uh, the authorities have realized that there's a lot of money in it. So they come in with their own offices. So now tomorrow they can say, we're going to have stage carriage. And that's it. This is the price. This is what you get. But the task forces there, are. The state carriage permit, uh, uh, the yes. interstate and interstate permit, uh, uh, exactly. the night post permit. Exactly. But what I think the government has done wrong, and I, you can. Uh, you can you, uh, you, of you course, can give it to us. Yeah. Yes, is that I think the sensitization wasn't too intense. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of people did not know this business was there. So I think the timing is also wrong mm -hmm. because oh. now that there's a boom, mm -hmm. they just came out and said, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you. So exactly. I think that is the problem. Mm -hmm. Let me One ask you because that, that is where I was coming with, with Ejo. Mm -hmm. okay. You are in the business of um, uh, food, right? And Prior to now, have you really used logistics company for your business? If it is yes, how has this affected your business in terms of costing? Because now, if I have to now add additional logistics to my business, the cost definitely cannot be the same if I wasn't using logistics. So tell us about, mm -hmm. you know, the logistics in your business. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So, um, I mean, I think we already started um, feeling the impact of the government policies or regulations on the logistics from the Okada ban that first went on. So we were just kind of like settling with that. And then now we're hearing that uh, courier companies have to, you know, be a limited liability company with XYZ shares and XYZ permits and, you know, all sort of things. Now for us that were in the food business, we, we actually partnered with, um, you can call him a one-man shop. So what it is, it's a dispatch rider who caters to people in our area. Because a lot of the mainstream logistics companies, when you ring them, they're like, oh, sorry, we don't cover your area. Mm -hmm. So what we did, a few of us SMEs in, you know, we are in the Bejuleki area, we, we came together and we found a rider who's willing to work with us because he lives in the area. So now this guy, he's probably not aware that he now that he needs to get a license or a pen. We've negotiated a deal with him to deliver our stock. Now I've told our customer from maybe we want your stock delivered to in on the island or in the mainland if XYZ Naira. How would I explain to someone, for example, that this product that you're buying that costs a thousand naira, you need to pay a delivery of between one thousand five hundred naira or two thousand naira. That's bad for business. 
yes, we operate a B2B, which means we push most of our, we push like 95% of our business to supermarkets. So customers can go to the supermarket to purchase. But now with this whole, you know, um, coronavirus thing going on, where people are encouraged to stay safe and stay at home. And like I have said, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an influx of people who are shopping online. So that is really that is obviously going to affect us now because even with the Okada ban, the guy has to get a box to get seven minutes to be on the road. We, we, he had to increase what he was charging us. And now, if he needs to go and register a company and do all he needs to do to be regulated because he's solely a courier company, what's going to happen to me? I mean, I cannot bear the call of as, a, as, a, as, a, as an MSME. So that means we will move on to the customer, which, you know, when you think about it, it's a bit unfair. And then you now start thinking of things that the, the vice president has said regards to the working of the, uh, on the ease of doing business in Nigeria. Exactly. And, you know, the fact that we MSMEs should be given certain concessions to do things. You know, it, it's like we, we have a win and then we go 10 steps back. Backward. Some of it up with a policy and they're like, where are we going? I mean, we just finished celebrating the NAFTAC um, um, palette for SMEs on Friday. And then that same day, this has come up. So it's so like a going around the circles. Hey, Jerry, so what do you think the solution is? Or what do you think uh, the government should do instead? How do you think they should, okay, so how do you me, think they should tackle the problem? I think they should also tackle the problem. There's nothing wrong with regulating the industry. And there's nothing wrong with the uh, enforcement and all. I'm all up for that. But I think um, somebody, I think it was Aniasa that uh, mentioned this. The timing is wrong. This is not the time to be telling people that you need to work out about half a million IRA in company registration, license fee, and uh, you know, every other administrative fee before you can start running a career service. I think the government needs to phase things in gradually. And um, I also understand that there's, there's like a care for the size of the company. But, well, I think some people pay two million, some people pay two hundred and fifty, some people pay five hundred thousand. Whatever it is that they're doing, they need to also consider of MSMEs. We make a huge sense. We make up a huge percentage of businesses in Nigeria. I mean, in a city like Lagos, where business literally booms. They need to factor factor us in, and like I also also mentioned that, like you know, when they notice that oh, there's there's a boom in this industry, they just change the laws. Like, oh, no, no, the laws will be you know, they just bring them out. Or, uh, let's go in there and you know enforce uh, regulations and everything. Mm. They need to consider. We're only just trying to find our feet. Imagine someone just puts together like three hundred thousand, however much you need to buy a bike. And they're like, okay, good. I can start the company small. Let me register business name. It's only like five thousand naira or fifteen thousand naira. And then they now tell you, sorry, you can't. You have to get a box. Box is twenty thousand. Get a state permit. Get interstate yes. permit. Get a uh, light post space. Get come on. It it's doesn't a bit make much. sense. So I it think doesn't what make the sense. Is face the in mm. and then. You know, have a plan for us MSMEs. I mean, it's, I, I it's, think um, we'll, we'll go on that plan um, this thing uh, shortly because what I honestly, what when I saw this, I just looked at the government. This is the wrongest time to do this. You know why? You are putting. Look at what Edgeway is saying and hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it is the customer, me, exactly, that will bear the body. Am mm -hmm. I earning money now? The answer is that exactly. I am only spending money from my, my limited it, resources exactly. that because I have. You to keep Some of us have not worked for two months. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been at home. We don't mm -hmm. have, we, because our businesses are short. Besides so that, I don't even are, know how we're going to move. To get the no. money. But you said something Wait. about having a solution. Yes. Who are, besides mm -hmm. that, you want people to be in their homes. And you're exactly. making delivery charges increase. So how is that going to balance out? Hmm. So it's, it, it's crazy. I think it's about the timing. Uh, basically, that's what it is. Yeah, I, I remember during the bank merger. Of course, this is the same thing. We have the same problem in the logistics business. Uh, somebody wakes up, gets a bike, gets a box, puts on the road without registration. You don't know this guy. He just has a number on his box. You're driving, you flag him down, you get the number, you exchange contact, you start calling him, start giving him goods. Mm. There are cases where dispatch riders disappeared with expensive goods mm. without a trace. Mm -hmm. So these are things that government is looking into. 
There has to be a regulation. There has to be where big companies can swallow the smaller ones and regulate them, manage them. Let me start from what happened during the bike ban uh, early this year. After the bike ban, a lot of dispatch riders lost their jobs. Yes. But why? automatically, why? But they were why? But they were excluded. No, 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 not dispatch riders. Sorry, Okada, Okada riders. Yeah, so they just converted sorry. to courier. Mm. Okada. So most courier companies adopted them. Now there is a new problem. Now bigger courier companies will absorb small courier companies because those ones who can afford to pay this amount of money will lose business. That? Okay, so I, I, I think I, I, if I hear you correctly, Lami, it's, yes. this thing is actually supposed to be easy. Like what Ajiro was saying. If you are telling somebody to spend five hundred thousand, first of there's all, it is, it is a no. You cannot Wait, even five hundred thousand. There's a reason. No, I understand license. that reason for that license. For but you license. see, it does not make sense. The Lipos license. If and now, no, if I have a bike tomorrow, and that is the only thing I have, maybe every everything is gone, mm -hmm. and the only thing I'm left with is my bike. Rather than go and steal, steal exactly. Let me take my bike and go and register as a logistics mm -hmm. company and start doing so something. So why can't you guys have like a body? A registered body that it is supervised by the government, but at minimum a fee, I cannot charge. Shop. Yes, I cannot charge you five hundred thousand mm -hmm. and charge somebody that is just starting the it's same five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. It should be tailored. The, mm -hmm. the, the the registration charges should be tailored as you grow. How many number of bikes? How many number of bikes you have in your name? No, Do you they, they actually have that. So why is it they now a that. problem? In fact, there are two things: no, sorry, Ministry of Transport sorry. and the Night Post. Okay, sorry, Lami, we need to go on a break because you. Let's not let we'll, um, Ejiro, if you're still there, we'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversations. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.